To understand how we got here, we need to go back exactly 1,000 days ago to January 6, 2021, when a violent mob stormed the U.S. Capitol. In the wake of that deadly attack, Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy took to the House floor and said this. The president bears responsibility for Wednesday's attack on Congress by mob rioters. He should have immediately denounced the mob when he saw what was unfolding. That moment was the closest Kevin McCarthy ever came to pulling himself out from under the heel of his party's hard right base. It did not last long. After that rebuke of Donald Trump, Mr. McCarthy spent each and every day paying penance, trying to work his way back into the good graces of the far right. Less than three weeks later, McCarthy flew down to Mar-a-Lago to pledge fealty to Donald Trump. Later that year, McCarthy refused to work with Democrats to establish a nonpartisan commission to investigate the events of January 6th. When Democrats went ahead with what became the January 6th committee, McCarthy did everything in his power to discredit that investigation. When Republicans' narrow midterm victory handed them an equally narrow majority in the House, McCarthy was still working off his debt to the MAGA base. After 14 bruising failed votes for Speaker, he effectively sold his speakership to the MAGA caucus. He gave conservative House Freedom Caucus members coveted committee assignments. He opened a wide-ranging investigation into the so-called weaponization of the federal government. And he gave far-right Republicans the ability to oust him from the speakership with just a single member needed to call that vote. But even after all of that, far-right Republicans still wanted more. And Speaker McCarthy obliged. He started a standoff with the White House over the debt ceiling. He opened an impeachment inquiry into President Biden. He passed an ultra-conservative bill to fund the government, which included massive cuts to social safety net programs. But none of it was enough. And it all came to a head today when Speaker Kevin McCarthy learned a lesson he probably could have learned a thousand days ago. You cannot appease the mob. This was the moment today when Kevin McCarthy officially lost his speakership. The yeas are 216. The nays are 210. The resolution is adopted. Without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. The Office of Speaker of the House of the United States House of Representatives is hereby declared vacant. Today, these eight Republicans voted with all of the Democrats in the House to remove McCarthy from power to end his speakership. In a last-ditch effort to save McCarthy, his allies made overt appeals to Democrats to bail him out. They asked Democrats to vote with Republicans to keep McCarthy in power. But Democrats in the House had already learned over the last thousand days that they could not trust Kevin McCarthy. Kevin McCarthy had either ignored them entirely or sold them out again and again. Just this week, after Democrats helped McCarthy avert a disastrous government shutdown, McCarthy went on television and tried to blame Democrats for the dysfunction. I wasn't sure it was going to pass. You want to know why? Because the Democrats tried to do everything they can not to let it pass. They did Democrats dilatory. were the ones who voted did you, for this did you in a did larger you watch number than Republicans to, to keep the continuing resolution alive. That moment was reportedly foremost in Democrats' minds when they voted in lockstep against Kevin McCarthy today. He had his chance to earn their trust, and he blew it. Tonight, Congressman McCarthy announced that he is officially giving up. He will not run for speaker again. I believe I can continue to fight, maybe in a different manner. I will not run for speaker again. I'll have the conference pick somebody else. House Republicans are now in the wilderness, uncharted territory. For now, Congressman Patrick McHenry will serve as interim speaker. He says he aims to hold an election for the new speaker next Wednesday. On that note, Republican Congressman Troy Niels has already nominated Donald Trump to be the speaker. And he can do that because the speaker does not have to be a member of the House. But does he have to be in good standing with the law? 
Just asking, because today a New York judge had to place a gag order on Donald Trump for lies he has been spreading about court officials working his trial. But when Trump was asked about the man he used to refer to as my Kevin, Trump imposed a gag order on himself. He had nothing to say. So just who gets to be the next Speaker of the House? Very much an open question. Maybe going to take a few rounds of voting, or maybe more than a few rounds. As he was leaving the Capitol tonight, Republican Congressman Dusty Johnson summed up his party's predicament, saying, you really have to wonder whether or not the House is governable at all. I'm not sure I wish this job on anyone. 